Welcome to our lecture online. The concept of charge in the universe, well, we kind of take that for granted. And we realize that it's the cause of the atoms existing and matter existing and molecules being formed and all the forces at the intermolecular level. But actually, it's quite amazing when we actually get into it and think about it. So we do realize that all atoms tend to be neutral in charge. In other words, they have the same number of positive charges as they do negative charges. The simplest atom in the universe is hydrogen, and we realize there is one positive charge, a proton at the center. The nucleus is just one proton, and we have one electron zipping around the nucleus. Quite fast, actually. And so together, since there's one positive one negative charge, the atom in itself is neutrally charged. Now, it's quite amazing that the proton is an actually very tiny particle relative to the size of the atom. The, the, the radius of the proton is 0.85 times 10 to, the, 10 to the minus 15 meters, and the radius of the atom, the distance from the proton to the electron, is 52.9 times 10 to the minus 12 meters. If you then compare the volume of a nucleus, the volume of the proton at the center, and the volume of the atom itself, well, the volume of the atom is 241 billion to 1 relative to the volume of the proton. The proton carries more than 99.9% .9 of the mass of the atom, but it's the electron that shapes the volume around the nucleus forming the atom itself. And it does so by having this enormous force of attraction between the two. So if the electron wasn't moving, it would almost instantly collide with the nucleus, with the proton, because they attract one another. But that's prevented from happening by the electron zip around the nucleus at a very high speed, and it makes orbits around the nucleus in all different directions, at random, so to speak, on average, in every direction. And it turns out that the electron travels around the nucleus about 6,000 trillion times per second, and it actually makes the electron essentially be everywhere at the same time, and that, that one little particle, that one little electron, forms a hard shell around the nucleus, and it's that shell that then gives the atom its shape, its strength, and its volume. So it's the incredible attractive forces between those charges that, it, that allows an atom to exist. Now when we take a look at another atom, for example, the oxygen atom, it has eight protons and eight neutrons in the center, in the nucleus. Of course, the neutrons don't have any charge, the eight prot protons do, so they carry a, a charge of eight positive charges. And then there's eight electrons, two in the inner orbit, six in the second orbit, or second energy level, as we call it. And so therefore, an oxygen atom is also neutrally charged. And so let's say we have an oxygen atom, and we have two hydrogen atoms, and they're both all three of the atoms are neutrally charged. What's also interesting is that oxygen has the affinity of trying to attract additional electrons. It would like to have two more electrons in such a way that it has a total of eight electrons in its second energy level. The orbitals, the s orbital, the p orbitals in the second energy level, it attracts two extra electrons. Well, where would they come from? From atoms who don't pull on their electrons as strongly as oxygen does, and so if hydrogen gets to, gets to be close to an oxygen atom, oxygen will simply rip away the electrons on the hydrogen, collect them, and now turn the oxygen atom into an oxygen ion with a net charge of minus two. And each of the hydrogens, which now are lacking an electron and only have a proton in the center, they each have a positive one charge. And since opposite charges attract, the two hydrogen ions that are positively charged are attracted to the negative oxygen ion that is negative two charge, and they then form a water molecule, one oxygen and two hydrogen. So it, again, it's the charges that give us the existence to atoms, like the, you see here, and they're neutrally charged, but then when they start ripping electrons away from one atom to another, then uh, they become ions, and ions attract one another, especially if, they're, of course, they're obsolete charged, and so that forms then molecules, and of course we have well over a million different molecules that we know of, of different combinations of atoms that have been joined together due to those attractive forces. So it's the charges on the individual atoms, 
the, di the distribution charges between the nucleus which is positively charged and the electrons which are negative, negatively charged and then the way the electrons are being moved around causing atoms to turn into ions which then combine to do attractive forces into molecules and that's the secret behind how electricity or better yet charges are the cause of the existence of atoms and the existence of molecules.